To set up and score a game on PlayHQ, you must have electronic scoring or full administrative rights for your club. If you don't have access yet, please reach out to one of your club administrators who can assist you with the setup process. To access PlayHQ eScoring, simply navigate to ca.score.playhq.com on your device. PlayHQ eScoring is a web application that can be used on mobile, tablet or laptop without the need to download an app. We recommend saving this URL to your home screen if you're using a mobile or tablet. For laptop users, you can save the page to your favourites or create a desktop shortcut. Shown here are the recommended browsers and operating systems. For best practice, it's always a good idea to ensure your device and browser have the latest updates installed. When setting up an eScore session, please ensure that your device is connected to the internet. Don't worry if you don't have internet access at the venue itself as you are able to score offline if required. To begin, log into electronic scoring using your PlayHQ account login details. Next, select the venue and date for the matches being played. Create a four digit PIN that will link your unique login with the game you are about to score. It is important to keep a record of your PIN as you will need it to confirm the game results at the end of the session. Note that this PIN is only for your device. If someone else needs to take over scoring of the same game, they won't require the PIN. It is solely meant to ensure that an authorised person confirms the score at the end of the game. If you're unsure about the venue title, you can find it within the fixture on playhq.com. A venue can contain multiple ovals. Once all fields have been entered, select Start Session. Once the session has been started, select the correct match to begin scoring. If your match is scheduled on a different oval to what is displayed, select the correct oval on the left-hand side of the screen. Please note that there might be multiple matches scheduled on the same oval on the same day. For example, a junior game prior to a senior game. It is crucial to ensure that you select the correct match. If you are connected to the internet and the primary scorer, live ball-by-ball -ball updates will be sent directly to playhq.com and public apps while you're scoring. This allows your members and supporters to see the scores updated in real time. However, if you don't have internet access, you can still score the game offline. In this case, the final results at the end of the match will automatically upload when you regain internet connectivity. To determine whether live updates are being sent, you can check for the presence of the live icon at the top of the screen. If the live icon is visible, it means that scores are being updated in real time. On the other hand, if there is an offline indicator, the scorecard will be uploaded once you regain internet connectivity. On the next screen, select the Edit Lineups option to confirm or update players from both teams. Lineups will already appear if they have been selected prior to the match. However, you can still make updates if necessary. It is important to note if you would like to select your lineups prior to game day, we recommend doing so in the admin portal or through My Teams. This ensures the game will not be moved to an in-progress status, therefore locking out scorers from e-scoring on game day. Please note that minimum and maximum number of players is set by associations. You will have the option to add or remove players who are allocated to the team. Use the plus or minus sign next to their name to make these changes. If needed, you can also add a fill-in player. Each fill-in player is covered by the National Insurance Scheme for that one match. If they decide to play more games, they will need to become a registered player. Please also keep in mind that if you add an unregistered fill-in player for any match, their stats for that game will not be displayed publicly and they will appear on public scorecards as fill-in. At this stage, you can also assign wicket keepers. This is helpful when applying fielding events. You can assign multiple wicket keepers or edit the wicket keeper at any time. Once you have confirmed the lineups, select Done and repeat the process for the other team. Next, select which team won the toss and whether they chose to bat or bowl. Select the opening batters and indicate who is on strike. Finally, select the opening bowler. 
to start scoring select start innings. If you need to change who is facing the first delivery, select the highlighted batter and select switch strike batter. The same process can be used to switch the opening bowler. You also have the ability to make changes to who won the toss and elected to bat by selecting options and then inning settings. If you need to edit a team's lineup at any point, select the team and then select edit lineup. Please note that once a player has been involved in an event, such as scoring runs or bowling, they cannot be removed from the lineup. You are now ready to start scoring by selecting the number of runs scored from each delivery. After making a selection, the batter on strike will be automatically updated, and you can also confirm your selections in the events column on the right-hand side of the screen. If you are using a video streaming integration such as Frogbox, you will need to select the Run Up button at the appropriate time to trigger the streaming of this event. Once the correct number of balls have been bowled, the over will automatically finish and an over summary will appear on the screen. After confirming the score from the over, select End Over, choose the next bowler and then select Start New Over. All extras such as wides and no balls can be selected from the options at the bottom of the screen. Remember, if additional runs are scored from a wide, you need to select the plus button and confirm the number of runs scored from that delivery. The same applies to no balls. If you are scoring on a smaller device, use the extras button to see all the extras options. To add runs, buys or leg buys to a delivery, select the dots option. For example, if a batter hits a four off a no ball or a no ball results in leg buys, you can use this option. All wide and no ball values are automatically added in addition to the runs, buys or leg buys. Pay attention to the umpire signals after the delivery to ensure you've selected the correct option. You can confirm your selection by checking the description of that delivery in the events column. If the association has specified whether no balls and wides should be re-bowled or count as a ball faced in the competition settings, those settings will be automatically applied during the scoring. As the scorer, you don't need to make any changes to this. PlayHQ eScore will adhere to the predetermined rules set by the association. To apply wickets, you can use the red wicket option located at the bottom of the screen. Start by selecting the batter who has been dismissed. By default, the batter on strike will be chosen, but you can select change to switch to the batter who wasn't on strike. Then choose the type of dismissal and specify the fielder involved if applicable. Additional options will be automatically displayed based on the selected dismissal type. In the case of a run out, double check if any runs were scored before the dismissal and add them to the score. You can also indicate whether the batters crossed each other before the wicket was taken. Afterwards, select next and select the next batter who will be heading out to bat. Select apply wicket to finalize the selection. If you are unsure of which batter to select, you can choose the skip option. Once you become aware of the batter, click on the red box and select the new batter. Please note that you won't be able to add any events until a batter is selected. If you've made a mistake, you can easily use the undo button to remove the previous selection you made. If you need to go back further in time, you can directly edit any previous deliveries from the events column. Navigate to the over and select the three dots next to the ball. From there, you can switch the strike batter, change the batters and or the bowler. If you change the batter or bowler, the remaining balls in the over will also update to reflect the newly selected player. When changing the strike batter, you will be asked if this change is for the current ball and all subsequent balls in the over or for the current ball only. Using the three dots, you can also edit the number of runs applied or replace the event entirely. Additionally, at the end of an over, you'll be prompted to add an event if necessary. If you need to make an edit to the score that is not directly linked to a specific delivery, you can use the scorecard. 
You can access the scorecard at any time by selecting it from the top menu or by selecting scorecard on the over summary. To make adjustments to the score on the scorecard, first select the innings from the drop down menu. Then use the plus sign next to a player to see the adjustment options. You can also make adjustments for extras. If you're unsure which player to adjust, you can modify the overall team score. If you need to retire a batter at any point, you can do so by selecting their name. Retired batters have the option to bat again later in the innings. It's important to note that for formats where a batter should only face a certain number of balls or make a certain number of runs before retiring not out, these settings are typically already applied by the association. Once the batter reaches the specified threshold, they will be automatically retired not out and the scorer will be prompted to select a new batter. However, these retired batters can still be chosen to bat again if needed. The total runs from a retiring batter's last ball will be applied to their score and the overall team's score. For example, if the association has set the maximum runs to 50 and the batter is 49 and makes a 4, they will be retired not out on 53 runs. Once a team has been dismissed or all overs have been bowled, you will be prompted to end the innings. Alternatively, you can manually end the innings at any time by selecting the Actions option and choosing End Innings. After ending the innings, you will be prompted to repeat the same setup steps that you followed at the beginning of the match in order to start the next innings. At the end of the match, a complete pop-up will appear, providing a summary of the match and its results. During a one-day or 2020 match, there may be a need to update the match parameters due to bad weather conditions. The PlayHQ eScoring platform includes a built-in DLS calculator. However, if your association does not use DLS, you can apply your own parameters. To update the match parameters, select Actions and Parameters. If it's the first innings of the match, you can change the over limit. During the second innings, when changing the parameters, you will have the option to select between DLS and custom settings. If you select custom, you can enter the over limit and a custom run target. If you select DLS, the target score will be calculated for you based on the DLS method and the provided over limit. For two-day or longer games, it is important to select stumps at the end of each day of play. This helps provide updates to those following the game online and ensures that the scoring device is prepared for the next day of play. If you are scoring the second day of a two-day game, all you need to do is click the game tile and continue scoring. If you are on a different device, you also need to select Download and Score Game. If split innings are required during the game, you can select actions and then split innings. Please note that these options for selecting stumps and split innings are only available for two day or longer games. To record a break in play, you can select actions and then select break. From there, you can apply the relevant type of break, such as rain delay, lunch break, tea break, or any other applicable break during the game. This information will be displayed on public apps and integrated streaming services, keeping the audience informed about the break in play. Once a team has been dismissed, the target score has been reached or all overs have been bowled, you will be prompted to end the game. It's important to note that whether the game can continue past the target score being reached is determined by the association settings. This will be applied automatically. Before submitting the game results, if allowed by your association, you can enter bonus points by selecting Add Ladder Bonus Points. You also have one final opportunity to edit the scorecard if necessary. Once you have completed these tasks, select Submit Game Result. You will be asked to provide the pin that was created for this session and confirm your selection. Before ending the session, make sure there are no games that need to be synced by checking for any red error messages. If you have a red error message, you can refresh the screen, which generally resolves the issue. If you were scoring offline, ensure that your device is connected to the internet again 
so that the match is finalized. Finally, select End Session. If you happen to notice an error after ending your session, don't worry. Simply reach out to your club administrator who will be able to make any necessary adjustments from the admin portal.